Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Faith is believing and hoping when there is little evidence for or against something. Delusion is believing when there is an abundance of evidence against something. Stanley Milgram began his famous obedience experiment 62 years ago, and based on that experiment, he stated that 80% of the population do not have the psychological or moral resources to defy an authority's order, no matter how illegitimate the order is. Therefore, only 20% have critical thinking capacity, and this explains a lot. This experiment was done in the early 60s, so, what might be the results today? It is now evident that only a tiny minority still retain any ability to think critically, a very precarious situation for humanity to be sure. Considering all that has taken place over these many decades, the broad-based dumbing down of society, the continuous wars of aggression, and the massive growth in dependence on rule by the collective herd, sadly, these numbers would be far worse. There can be no endorsement of the progress of man, quite the opposite is the case, as this is an indictment of the psychological and moral breakdown of society at large, and the total disregard for reason, virtue, logic, and truth. Stanley Milgram once said, The essence in obedience consists in the fact that a person comes to view himself as an instrument for carrying out another person's wishes, and he therefore no longer regards himself as responsible for his actions. So, after additional consideration, I thought it prudent to speculate on the different aspects of society. To take this idea to a different level. The people used in the initial Milgram experiments were basically normal individuals, some hand-picked and some volunteers. These were not civic leaders, high-level politicians, rulers, or famous people, but were common Americans for the most part. What would happen if instead of regular people being the test subjects, politicians, rulers, government officials, mainstream media puppets, and military types, were the ones pulling the lever in these experiments? It would be a logical assumption that these types of people would be even more likely to inflict punishment on their fellow man on orders, as they are staunch believers of hierarchy and are therefore more accepting of rank authority. This assumption does not bode well for a free sane and independent society. If well more than 80%, more like 95% in my view, of the general population today, does not have the psychological and moral resources to defy authority and embrace right and denounce wrong, and the political class, and all others associated with them, are even less likely to be able to discern right from wrong, where does that leave us? Without a mass conversion by the proletariat, it leaves us completely vulnerable to eternal enslavement. One look around should be enough for anyone able to think at even a small child's level that mass slavery is not only being aggressively pursued, but is the common state of man throughout the world today. The current state of being is one of a master and his slaves. No government has ever brought freedom and of course could never do so. Government only exists through force, and force is the antithesis of freedom. Government and rule can only exist and survive if the masses accept and allow it, and that has always been the case, regardless that history has shown since the beginning of time that this insane ideology is the cause of theft, slavery, economic failure, torture, misery, poverty, war, and genocide. All government and rule is a curse on humanity. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. We are living in a world that could easily be described as eternal hell, if such a place was to actually exist. That hell has befallen mankind due to his own hand. 
It is not the fault of one or another, of any particular ruler or king, or secret organization, or any single government, or any single religion. It has been allowed to happen because of human weakness, cowardice, irresponsibility, indifference, dependence, envy, hatred, and the need to be part of the collective hordes of pathetic fools who make up this human race. It is one thing to crave social contact, which is natural, but it is quite another to abandon your individuality by voluntarily consenting to be ruled, controlled, abused, stolen from, slaughtered, and murdered. Do not take my meaning out of context, as I state the obvious without constraint. I fully understand that there are some good people in this world, but they are difficult to find among the crowds of human drones. Most every government, if not all of them, are warring against their own populations, as well as in many cases, warring against others as well. The so-called reset agenda has let loose the globalist demons who have joined together to depopulate this earth to make it ready for the coming elite takeover. Alas, as this is happening, and an open view of all, few understand that every major country and government, even those who pretend to be enemies, are all working toward the same goal. While the lowly people take the bait and hate all those they are told to hate, stay divided, stay dependent on their chosen evil masters, and accept every atrocity with little if any resistance or empathy for the innocent, the plot against them continues unabated. Think about just the past few years, think about the terror committed in your name, consider all the death and destruction, consider all the increased poverty, famine, war and murder, and try to imagine being in the shoes of others who are so much worse off than yourselves. The most evil entities are currently before your eyes, committing mass genocide of an entire people, and all you do is take sides with one government or the other, while innocent men, women, and mostly children, are being tortured and slaughtered in your name, killed by weapons supplied by you, through your evil proxy government. Continue fighting amongst yourselves, hating each other, and taking sides with your demon rulers, and that will certainly lead you into even more hell. There is only one way to gain freedom, one way to break the chains that bind you, and one solution to this madness. Freedom will never happen until each individual is fully and totally responsible for himself. When your life is your responsibly entirely, so that your only incentive is to take care of yourself or die, then and only then can you be free. How many of you would be willing to take that responsibility? How many would even consider it? Any honest answer to this question would bring total silence, just as is the silence today in the face of the horror, tyranny, brutality, economic destruction, and continuous slaughter and murder of the human race that most all continue to ignore. Faith in the human race and governments. What a confused state of mind is this. Poor, wretched, and stupid peoples, nations determined on your own misfortune and blind to your own good. You let yourselves be deprived before your own eyes of the best part of your revenues, your fields are plundered, your homes robbed, your family heirlooms taken away. You live in such a way that you cannot claim a single thing as our own, and it would seem that you consider yourselves lucky to be loaned your property, your families, and your very lives. Tyrants would distribute largess, a bushel of wheat, a gallon of wine, and a cestus. And then everybody would shamelessly cry, long live the king. The fools did not realize that they were merely recovering a portion of their own property, and that their ruler could not have given them what they were receiving, without having first taken it from them. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.